Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube, covering Knowledge 15, brought to you by ServiceNow. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching SiliconANGLE and WikiBond's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and expect a simple noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm my host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of WikiBond.com. Our next guest is Sri Chandra Shaker, VP and General Manager of the ITOM, ITOM Business Unit Service Now. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you so much, John. So IT operations management, this is the new buzzword, um, really developing its own, its own quadrant, if you will, in the marketplace. It's got its own segment, it's growing fast. Give us the update, IT service management, ITSM, uh, ITOM, ITOM. It's just quickly describe the differences because this, the operations management piece is getting a lot of traction because it's, it's really, the, the, the market's growing. Absolutely. IT operations management has been growing a lot. Overall, it's about a $28 billion market and uh, it includes everything from mainframe management, network management, log management, and all. Uh, we are focusing on the areas like cloud management, configuration management, services lifecycle management. Uh, provisioning, orchestration. All of that is included, pretty much. Uh, cloud management takes care of provisioning. Configuration management takes care of configuring your applications using Puppet or Chef. Services lifecycle management takes care of deploying your applications into the cloud, releasing it, and testing it, all of that. So Pat Kelsinger had an announcement this week at VMware of native cloud apps, VMware's big push. And, and the notion is containers are hot. Mm -hmm. What's your take on all this? I mean, native cloud is the trend. You guys now have new stuff here in the platform. Is this what we're talking about in the ops side for cloud, or? Um, or? At the end of the day, operations management uh, supports containers very much by nature. Uh, for us, it's, it's a black box, M meaning there are applications that are built using containers, there are applications that are built outside of containers. At the, both of those have to be developed, built, deployed, managed, monitored, remediated. So all of that is possible. So from an operations management perspective, yes, containers are hot, absolutely, and we do support uh, containers. It's a black box for us at the end of the day. So we were talking off camera about sort of the market segmentation, how yeah. different people look at it. You know, Gartner might have their way, IDC might have their way. How do you look at IT operations management and its relationship to IT service management? Fantastic uh, question. At the end of the day, a workflow doesn't stop at people and processes within an enterprise. It goes beyond that into their infrastructure. That's the whole idea of taking service management, which is about change incident problem, service catalog, and so on. And when you start talking about infrastructure, almost all enterprises have part of their infrastructure in their private cloud, part of their infrastructure in their public cloud. Many things happen. What devices are in your infrastructure? What software is installed on those devices? What services are running in your infrastructure? How do you monitor them? How do you bring the data back into your CMDB? And once you bring that data back, at the end of the day, Alan was talking about earlier, I'm patching a particular server. So you create a change record for that. All of that, so service management, you use incident problem change, service catalog, and many other technologies. And operations management is about connecting the infrastructure to the services side. Whether it is monitoring and bringing the data back, or discovering and bringing the information back, and reasoning over that data, and institution change back into the infrastructure. So what does that mean? That means we use all the data that we have collected and all the service management uh, information that we have in our cloud and do informed change back using orchestration automation at the end of the day. Okay, and you have a separate business unit that you, yes. you run uh, that, that's focused on ITOM. Mm -hmm. Why the separate business unit? Obviously you feel is it's distinct enough. Is it a different set of practitioners? Uh, is it it's different technology infrastructure? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, it is a different business unit for two reasons. Uh, one is the audience that we go after for service management 
and the audience we go after for operations management, some of them are similar. Like, how do you run your operations? Like, what dash dashboards do I see on a daily basis? How do I know what services are up, what services are down, all of that. There are other set of audiences like VP of development, VP of applications engineering, all of those uh, folks who build applications and who deploy applications, who provision applications in the cloud, IT departments need to support them. They are sister teams. So one is a VP of operations, the other is VP of applications development. VP of application development will be saying, I want these applications provisioned in my cloud. Make it easy for me. VP of operations is making it simple and providing a single button click like a service catalog where you can go provision, configure all of that and give it back to them so that that's how we, there is some commonality and there is some differences. So we are going after additional sister uh, organizations within an enterprise and selling to those. And the, and the head of application development might say, and I want my app uh, provisioned on the fastest portion of the tier one yes. version of the cloud. And there's a process to determine and adjudicate whether or not that happens. Because everybody always wants yeah. the gold. Exactly, <laughs> and, and you can determine at the end of the day, uh, as an IT department, what kind of service catalog do I build and what kind of applications can be made available through that service catalog as well as who can provision them. Like for example, if there is a uh, development team that needs the highest end hardware, you can say, okay, John or David can actually provision such things and that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And somebody else might say, I'm building a test application, I really don't need the top end hardware, I need this kind of hardware and it can only run in the middle of the night because when cost is cheap, at, like spot pricing at Amazon, for example. So when you, when you need that, then you can say, okay, this is a job that I don't need to run peak time. Just run it at low so time. So that's a lot of flexibility, big time. Lots of flexibility that can be provided by IT uh, administrators, IT departments, to their application developers using cloud management and, right. and, and service management. So we got some questions from the people in the crowd chat. So go, join the conversation if you're watching. Uh, go to crowdchat.net slash no15. Uh, a lot of action going on around uh, ITOM, I-T-O-M, called mm -hmm. ITOM. Last night you guys had a uh, packed house at the SIG Special yes. Interest Group yes. uh, 21 hours ago. About uh, 260 people showed up. It was full, fantastic. Full house, standing room only. Full house, <laughs> and so, so uh, some commentary coming around that. Also, there's a question in the, from the, from in the social web watching. Um, how does ITOM drive everything as a service? Could you explain that, please? Absolutely. Uh, what, what, one of the ways in which uh, we are looking at operations management differently than uh, other companies is looking at operations management from a service-oriented perspective. We built the CMDB in such a way that it's not, operations management is not just about the infrastructure, it's about a service. Typically, you don't care about a server going down in a data center, you care about what services did it bring down. My, did my payroll service come down, or did the cube.com come down? That's what you care about, not a particular server. So yeah. what we are trying to do is to build. You're separating out the functionality of the app from the myriad of services and gear, or whatever under the covers. Exactly, we are looking at it from a services perspective so that you can create a service, provision a service, configure a service, deploy a service, manage, monitor, remediate. That's orchestration. Orchestration is very much a foundational element of ITOM. We build the technology, we automate pretty much everything in our own so cloud this, using that. So if I'm an end user, I'm a customer, I say, okay, this actually helps me with all the human errors, right? Because isn't human errors a big part of... Human errors is indeed... Because you're talking about configuring, unplug a server, we've had the cube go down because someone redefined the shutdown it, the port. It's got to be one of the top culprits. It is, it is one of the top culprits. Uh, almost uh, all enterprises have planned changes and unplanned changes. Planned changes are, I thought about it, I know what I want to do. Unplanned changes are, somebody kicked the cable or somebody accidentally shut down the wrong server, all of those things. And it, that's, you need to reduce the unplanned changes a whole lot. And how can you give visibility to enterprises so that between day one and day 10, here were the planned changes that were happening and the, here are the unplanned changes that happened. We can easily do that through Service Watch, and you can act, map the business service, and you can do service drift, meaning on day one, I map the service, it looked like this. On day 10, I map the service, it looked like this, meaning additional nodes were added, some nodes were removed, some nodes were updated, all of that is fine. And by the way, I also noticed that 10 changes happened. 
of which I can easily see that six of those are planned because I find the change records for those in my CMDB. The remaining four, I know it's changed, but I don't see any change records. Somebody did it accidentally or unintentionally, and it probably brought down the service or reduced the SLA for the service. Well, so, it's interesting to note when Dan McGee this morning talking about the, <clears throat> the availability statistics and the how ServiceNow minimizes unplanned downtime, presumably there's a relationship between exactly. that and the, IT, uh, uh, the ITOM piece. Of what Very much. One of the things that uh, we did uh, was to acquire this uh, technology called ServiceWatch last yeah. summer. I personally led that acquisition. And the important thing about that is not only do I know what server or what network gear was brought down at any point in time, where is it connected to? Which business services does it support? That's the most important thing. Once you know that, you can say, oh, this server went down, it is bringing down my payroll service or it's bringing down my e-commerce website. Let, let's talk about relevance, why this is relevant. So Dave and I always talk about Amazon, yeah. um, it's been talked about here. They just released their earnings, they did $1.5 billion this quarter, so they just broke out the numbers, Dave. Um, First time ever. 265 million in profit. 1.5 mm -hmm. billion in in this quarter, first quarter. In, in Q1. AWS. In AWS. And they're profitable. Oh, what have I been saying for how long? <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's why I brought it up. You get vindicated. Yeah, no, no, I want to share the numbers. They're on track to be uh, six billion per year. I think it's going to be more like 10. I bring this up not because we want oh, to dance, dance over service now, but because your show's so big, you are Amazon for IT. And, and now other solutions, in my mind, that's what we've been talking about. So this makes the ITOM conversation significant. Absolutely, it is very significant. Um, we, today, uh, we make roughly about net new revenue, about 10% of our revenue overall. Largest, second largest business at uh, ServiceNow. The growth last two years has been 300%, 300%. Whatever we made in 2012, tripled that in 2013, whatever we made in 2013, tripled It speaks tripled what the customers again. are doing. Exactly, so we are growing at 3x last two years and we continue to grow. It's an important part of what our customers are trying to do automating through orchestration. It's the plumbing. Exactly, look at, look at a couple of customers. I mean, I visited about 75 to 80 customers in the last three months. Uh, almost all of them have six or eight or 10% or 15%, some of them in the public cloud, their workloads. All, when I asked them, how much do you want to move to, from there, they're saying 60, 70, 80% of my workloads in about three to four years, I want to be in the public cloud so that I don't have to worry about managing my own private cloud so much, I don't need to worry about buying my own hardware, getting my own network engineers to set that up, systems engineer to configure them appropriately. Instead of that, I'm moving some of my workloads and that is huge. How can we help them make that happen? How can we easily make that journey happen in such a nice way that it's painless? Yeah, reliable, it's, agile, flexible. I mean, you guys are doing and the plumbing needs to get built under the covers that you kind of wire together behind the curtain. Okay, I get that. Maybe you can fill in the white spaces, but it shows the momentum of the market. Yes. The market is clear. Customers yes. are going to the cloud, yes. and you guys have this new model. It's, Am it's Amazon-like. Yes. They land and expand, core base. Yeah. So developers, what does it mean for the developer? Oh, lots of things. Uh, again, Alan covered some wonderful things uh, just before me. So. For developers, what it means is, look, think about it this way. I have an application that you mentioned earlier, which Cube application. Let's say it has 18 features today. It's running perfect and in, it's in production. I want to add two more features. You're not going to actually go and touch your production instance and change that right away. What you need is a dev instance. Yeah. So what you do, to do that, you need to understand how is my application now? So we can map that application, understand what the topology looks like, what the configuration looks like, and create a copy of it, whether it's in Amazon, Azure, uh, VMware, wherever. And so, and give you, and hydrate that with the test data or real data, whatever data you want. And then application developers can develop on it, mature the features, get it tested, get it ready, and then say, now I'm ready to bring it back into production. So we, we got to get you hooked up with Steve Chambers, our cloud analyst, because I think this is probably one of the most 
really, really important points in cloud. And it's not talked about, it's not sexy headline mm -hmm. news. I mean, Amazon gets the, 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 the front, the front of HR, all these apps. But under the covers, that's the DevOps innovation that you guys are abstracting away from the developers. Exactly, because we, we don't want developers to worry about what it means to go provision an individual virtual machine or s configure it or connect all the database layer to the application layer and all. Because if application is already developed, take it, clone it, make it easy for them. And again, the same thing can be extended to moving. When customers yeah. say, I want to move to public cloud, my workloads, take it, map it, build the service model, build a copy of it, hydrate it from this original I got, I got to ask you a question. Do you feel like sometimes you're chasing your tail because you guys are moving so fast as a company? I mean, oh. uh, Fred oh my God, must yes. put a lot of pressure on you. Oh, Sri, great job. Uh, you're done, no, no, we just instituted presence in real time. Absolutely. So tell us what the that. impact of that means. <laughs> <laughs> when I joined ServiceNow uh, about three and a half years ago, we were 375 people. It's 3,100 people now. Uh, look at the f pace at which we, we have grown. Again, we acquired customers at an amazing rate, like 690 customers last year alone. And about 460 of those went live last year alone. So, and the pace at which things are moving is really, yeah. really fast. But what well, adoption what, from customers is only one dimension. You got technology. Exactly, uh, technology and adoption, and and we are actually making a huge difference. As uh, Frank said at the uh, keynote on Tuesday, at the twenty-five percent of our customers are using ServiceNow to do things outside of IT. That is a phenomenal, mind-blowing number. It is. So, uh, so we are not only. It means the next Amazon. Let me just translate that to the market. They're the next Amazon for applications. That would be a great <laughs> place to. <laughs> That's a big bold prediction. Um, hey, if you can do, you know, billion a quarter, I think you know we're on pace to do that. What, is, what was Frank's numbers? Four billion. Four billion by, by 2020. 2020. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the right idea. I mean, the service now will be a billion dollar company soon here. Yeah. I mean, there's 600 this plus year. now. This so. year, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would think you're going to hit it this year. So. But there are some there are some things you got to take care of with API economy, the security thing. You got the uh, um, ITOM yes. work you're doing. Uh, what else is on the, the the top priority list and conversations you're having? For us, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that customers realize what their services are and how it maps to uh, their infrastructure. How to help increase their service health, improve their service availability, and reduce the mean time to resolution (MTTR). And we want to help customers move their workloads to the cloud in a very seamless, easy way. Through cloud management, through migrations, through moving, through uh, cloning. All the technology we have developed internally for our own use any, anyway. Uh, you must have heard about 40,000 instances were provisioned of ServiceNow for labs in the last three days so that customers can actually look at uh, their sessions and play with ServiceNow instances. It gets spun up 15 minutes yeah, before yeah. the instant, um, before I mean, the lab. It's, it's a total service now geek party. I mean, really. exactly. Like, <laughs> we did France, have a beer. Had, one no, no, I'm going to only have one beer. I'm going to hit my instance. One <laughs> person did it, and uh, and the whole thing. And he's, 40, he's, 40, forty thousand instances. Forty thousand instances in three days, spun up and spun down, 15 minutes before the session starts and 15 minutes after the session ends. Yeah, and then the beach and, party. And the <laughs> <laughs> No, you guys really have a formula right now that I think is unique, and I think the technology's wind is at your back, and I think the IT cent center point of innovation yes. is a very valuable you know, world. How do you protect that? I mean, obviously you got to put protection mechanisms in, and as you go outside of IT, I mean, you're not going out on a direct or frontal basis to compete against Salesforce, but you are indirectly. I mean, it's like saying, you know, you know, football competes with baseball, but they're different sports. I mean, but then the mind share of the user is still there, right? So like, you got, you're encroaching on adjacent verticals, Absolutely. but the core of IT, how do you protect the IT kingdom? Very simply put, three in three different ways. First of all, Fred, when he founded the company, ensured that we build a single platform, single data model, single system of record, upon which all applications are built and leveraged. And we adhere to that with an insane passion. Even when we acquire companies, whether it's Nebula or Mirror 42, when we bring that into ServiceNow, we want to make sure that it adheres to the same formula. So new applications that get built are built so that it all uses the same data model, same single system of record, same database, same Glide platform. So that ensures extensibility. Extensibility, and no, more than that, it ensures that it is better together. We, the same, 
server no, that files. you exactly <laughs> same server that you discovered the same server upon which you created a change record same server that you mapped to a business service is all in the ex one record in that cmdb is used so it's beautiful that's one we are not going to go away from it that's is most of our competitors do not do that. They have multiple databases that has to be synchronized and duct taped. We don't have to that's worry about that. That's a lot of overheads that. and moving parts. It's exactly, that's the first one. The second one is when we design and build applications, we make sure that one takes advantage of the other very much. Like, for example, when an event management system was built, it collects monitoring data, correlates them to a right CI after deduplication, and then says, what do you want to do now that you have the alert? Oh, I want to create an incident off of it. Oh, I want to notify David about it. I want to send uh, a log to somebody else over email. Perfect. And I, guess what? I can also trigger a business rule to remediate it automatically and then inform the service owner that the service was taken care of. Don't worry about it. So you saw change, incident, or orchestration, automation, and the capability within the platform to trigger business rules all leveraged in context of event management, which is part of operations management. Yeah. Likewise, when you talked earlier about cloud management, we provision total applications or whole stacks of services using a simple service catalog that is given to application developers. There is service management, service catalog coming into play. And let's say you can only instantiate 10 of those. The 11th one you try to instantiate, it can go to approval for your manager. So look at it, yeah, service yeah. management coming into play very yeah, well. So yeah. all of those things are taken advantage of as we build. So that better together is. It's like Amazon integrated stack, but horizontally a platform. It's, it's very, I mean, very important. We're getting the hook here, but I got to ask you one question because you're, you're so awesome on the queue with the, with the knowledge. Thanks for sharing so, your knowledge. What's the microservices trend? We're hearing that all, pivotal guys are talking about EMC, VMware, microservices. What the hell does that mean? Little services, part of applications? They kind of talk about it as far as cloud Actually, native apps. It's, it's a new spin on what was originally called service-oriented architecture <laughs> where you build. No, it's, it's, it yeah. is because at the end of the day, service-oriented architecture uh, is all about building services in such a way that they hook like Lego blocks. They have clear interfaces that one service understands with each other. And they're reusable. Yeah. Reusable. Microservices are a newer take on that where a services does, can be as small as is possible yeah. and as portable as they're is possible. They're redefining SOA to ride the Docker wave. Very much, very much. And uh, sorry, the l third uh, thing that I was trying to say earlier was, I mentioned two things, single platform, si uh, better together. Enterprise cloud, Dan McGee talked about it in our yeah. keynote today. Nobody offers the kind of enterprise cloud that we do because of which that those are the three advantages and we adhere to that and make sure that whatever we do, we don't give those three things up. That's sacred ground. To compromise ground. and build something where. You don't go off, do off the reservation. Exactly, do and, and thanks to our leadership team, they don't let us go off the reservation. They, protected. <laughs> it's important. It's Between very, Frank, very important. Dan that's what, and Fred, I mean. Yeah, they, they are, and rightfully so, because that's what has made us grow this fast and yeah. this uh, nicely. So why not continue with that? Yeah, you got There's more, nothing wrong with that approach. It's working. So don't it's working, fix so. what's not broken. That's what I always say. Sri, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Congratulations on your growth of your business unit. Thank and you. uh, again, Pack House at the SIG uh, last night. And obviously, uh, it's everything is a service. You're a key enabler. This is theCUBE, enabling more data, sharing that with you here at Knowledge 15, Share the Knowledge, live in Las Vegas. I'm John Horner, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with more after this short break.